Hello students, are you struggling to draw microscopic structures in your histology journals? Are you tired of not understanding the suggested corrections? Join our series where we break down complex diagrams into simple easy to draw steps. Come, today let's study the cerebellum. So let's begin drawing the cerebellum by first drawing a neat and tidy square. And now draw these lines. What are these lines? Each of the folds that you're seeing on the screen are called as folium and the depressions in between are the transverse sulci. Define the folia clearly by once more drawing clean lines, okay, and understanding the basic structure. Now stain it up, okay. So this is a small section of your cerebellum. You have stained it. You can see folia and transverse sulci. Now cover this structure with the very thin layer of pia mater. Okay, you can draw a few blood vessels also indicating that it is vascular. Now what do we do? Now we begin to divide the cerebellum into an outer cortex and an inner medulla by drawing this. Okay, now color it up nicely and gently rub it out a little. Now this structure that you are seeing is the inner medulla and whatever is left on the outside is the outer cortex. Inner medulla is the white matter, outer cortex is the grey matter of cerebellum. Now what we will do is we will further work on the grey matter. Okay, So now in the grey matter begin to draw this line. Okay, Just deep to it draw another line. Okay, and now gently rub out these this way. So you are basically creating a base within the cortex also. You are dividing the cortex. Okay, now let's understand that the outer gray matter consists of three layers. Outer molecular layer, intermediate Purkinje cell layer and an innermost granular layer. So here you can see that this is the outer molecular layer, this is going to be the Purkinje cell layer and from here to the medulla is your granular layer. Okay, So this is broadly the division of cerebellum. Let us now add some cells to this. Okay, So begin to now add lots of cells to the granular layer. Keep on adding, you have to have a little patience here. Keep on adding cells randomly okay but they have to be closely packed together in the granular layer so if you look at the diagram you can see the three layers even better defined now now let's begin to add the single layer of cells which is the Purkinje cell layer so these are a single layer of large cells called as the Purkinje cells each cell has an apical region and a basal region its dendritic tree is spreading out in the molecular layer and its axons are descending downwards into the white matter of cerebellum. See these, this is the dendritic tree that we are drawing. The dendritic tree will spread out in the molecular layer. Let's add the nuclei now. There you can clearly now see a single layer of cells forming the Purkinje cell layer. Now let's go to the molecular layer and begin to draw tiny nuclei. What are these nuclei? These are the outer layer of stellate and basket cells. Stellate cells are a little more superficial, basket cells are a little more deep in the outer molecular layer of cerebellum. Finally, let's begin to add lots of nuclei in the granular layer. Okay. Again, have patience, keep on adding nuclei. If the layer is not well defined, as you can see here, add another layer of nuclei, define that layer very well because these three layers are clearly identification features of cerebellum. So the three layers must be well defined. Okay. Now, once you are done doing this, Take a look. You can see the three layers in the cortex. Molecular layer, Purkinje cell layer, granular layer. Let's now move on to the medulla where you have to draw such lines indicating presence of axons passing through the white matter. Okay. So let's label this now and there that completes your diagram of microscopic structure of cerebellum. Keep following this series for more of such guidelines regarding microscopic structure.